Hi, this is Christina. And Christina. And in this short video, we're going to talk about a case of a 39-year-old woman who presented to the ED recently with ankle pain and abdominal pain. So she, her history included a uh, history of depression. She had some alcohol abuse. Um, she had been pregnant three times and two therapeutic abortions and two leap procedures. She came into eval presenting um, with um, a twisted ankle um, after a mechanical fall two days ago. She then woke up this um, that morning with diffuse lower abdominal pain. She stated that she had her menses two weeks ago. She's been having normal bowel movements and no urinary symptoms. Her vitals uh, were pretty stable at the time. She was a little bit tachycardic in 120. On her exam, she was guarding. She didn't have any rebound for her pain was really diffuse in the lower abdomen. Her ankle looked uh, relatively fine with mild lateral um, ankle edema, but she had good range of motion and she'd been walking on it for about two days. All right, great. So what did you guys do next? So because of her belly pain and her fall, we decided to do a fast scan. Awesome. And this is a fast scan when her right upper quadrant. All right, so what we're seeing here is the liver and the kidney. And fanning through, you see the tip of the liver. There's no obvious free fluid there. You look between the liver and the diaphragm, we don't see any obvious fluid back here. There's maybe a little something right there, but it's hard to say because of the shadows. Um, so this you know, potentially could be borderline positive, uh, but luckily we have several views to look at. So here's the left upper quadrant view. And what do you guys think of this view? Um, in the left upper quadrant, it, we could see the tip of the spleen. It didn't look like there was any free fluid there. Um, nothing obvious there either. Yeah, so again, here we're looking at the kidney. Here's the spleen. And right there, you're seeing a little bit of artifact of gas in the stomach, which is pretty common in the left upper quadrant. But then when you look between the diaphragm and the spleen up here, and then the diaphragm and the spleen down here, nothing obvious. So then we move down to the bladder. Um, and the uterus, and that actually looked negative as well. Yeah, so this is our transverse or short axis view. We have the bladder here and the uterus here. We'd normally be looking for fluid between the bladder and the uterus or in the posterior cul-de-sac down here and agree there's nothing obvious. And so did you stop there and call it a negative fast? Nope. Uh, we turned the probe into the longitudinal view of the um, bladder and then there was something there. <laughs> Yeah, so this certainly does not look normal. Um, and what did you guys make of this picture? You know, um, I personally never seen this. I'm so used to free fluid looking very black. Um, so we, I was like, there's the uterus, <laughs> there's a the bladder. What is all of this stuff? Yeah, so agreed. This does not look like the normal black anechoic free fluid that we're used to seeing, uh, but definitely is free fluid. So just to orient us, what we're looking at here, this is the bladder, and then the uterus is actually right here, and the endometrial stripe is right in the middle there. And then what we're seeing back here, this is all complex fluid, and it's clotted blood. That's what clotted blood looks like, kind of mixed echogenicity, bright and dark. And this is exactly where you would expect to find it. Right. So we're definitely concerned at this point. She um, ended up getting a formal pelvic uh, ultrasound to confirm what was going on. And she had a positive UCG at that time. And then she went um, to the OR per ob -GYN. And how much blood did she have in her belly? The, they actually took out 800 cc's of fluid. Thanks. So this was an awesome case to review a few key points. One is, of course, that clotted blood looks much different than fresh blood or simple free fluid and that it's a mixed echogenicity. And now that you know what it looks like, uh, we don't have to get a formal ultrasound uh, because you can identify it. And then also a really great example that you need to get two views of the pelvis and do a complete scan through because you saw in this case that the short axis view had nothing obvious, but the, long, the longitudinal view showed very obvious clotted blood. And then just a final reminder that free fluid in females of childbearing age is a ruptured ectopic pregnancy until proven otherwise. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for listening. Uh, and check back on our website soon for more teaching videos.